So now that you know a little bit about the mole, uh, we know how it's used, we've seen how it's used in class a little bit, let's actually get into the actual mathematics behind us. You can take some formal notes on this and um, see some example problems to, that allow you to un better understand what's going on here. So now we talk about mole conversions. Let's talk about gram to mole conversions first. Now there are many different ways to solve mathematical problems. I will set it up one way. If you want to come up with something different, if you find some way that works better for you, please feel free to do it, okay? You do not have to stick with my method every single time. So let's do this example problem here. How many moles are in six grams of carbon? So we know some basic facts about uh, moles and elements and stuff. So what we always do in any mathematical problem any mathematical problem. It doesn't matter if we're doing mole conversions or gas law problems or acids to bases. The first thing you do in every single problem is write down what you are given. So the first thing I'm given in this problem is six grams of carbon. So I write down six grams of carbon. Now I want to do a conversion. So the only way to do a conversion is to basically set up a ratio. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up this little chart. And what I want to do in my conversion is on the bottom are going to go the units for whatever I was given in the problem. Okay, so I was given grams of carbon. So I'm going to write down grams of carbon on the bottom. And what's going to happen is grams of carbon are going to cancel with grams of carbon. You have to remember math class. You want to get rid of a fraction. You multiply it by the inverse, that whole thing. Well, that's what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my six grams of carbon. I'm going to get rid of the grams of carbon. I'm going to convert it into what I want in the problem, which is moles of carbon. Because the question says, how many moles? So I know I'm calculating moles out of this whole thing. And I've got to get myself out of grams. So now I've got to set up the numbers for my ratio. Well, I know from other things I've done that the weight from the periodic table is equal to one mole of that substance. So grams is the weight. So wherever I put the grams, that's where the number from the periodic table is going to go. One is always going to go with the mole in this section. So I've got one mole on the top, 12.01 grams on the bottom. Remember to round to two places past the decimal for masses from the periodic table. Now I just multiply across the top and I divide by everything on the bottom. So basically I'm taking 6 and I'm dividing by 12.01 and I get 0.5. Okay, obviously 6 is half of 12. So I chose a nice easy example to make it to make it work out nice and simple. So and of course, because I'm now working with numbers, I want to of course circle my answer to make sure that um, Mr. Siegel can see it when I go to write it down on a piece of paper. Okay, so we want to keep our math nice and neat and organized, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to round our circle our numbers at the um, when we're all done with them. So how many moles are in 107 point grams of lead? Well, the process doesn't change no matter what you're going to do. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to write down your given, which is 107 point one grams of PB. Set up your little conversion. I'm converting two moles. One mole goes on the top. I'm converting from grams of lead. Lead goes on the bottom. Now, I go to the periodic table. I find lead, PB. Lead is number 82, and it has a weight of 207.2 grams. So, now I just take 107.1, divide by 207.2, Pull out my handy dandy calculator. You're like, whoa, what's that, Mr. Siegel? Yep, that's right, I have a digital calculator. So, I'm going to turn on my calculator and I'm going to take 107.1, sorry. Point 0.1 divided by 207.2. It doesn't like me today. And I get point five one six eight nine two do 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 do. So, so um, we're not going to write all these digits. That's ridiculous to write all of those digits. Now um, we're going to talk about sig figs in this section, and we're going to talk significant figures. Which numbers are the most important? I was given four digits in my given, so I'm going to round to four digits in my answer. So it's point five one six eight nine. So I'm going to round to the eight. So it's five point five one six nine. And of course I put the units on the end because unlike math class, this actually means something. The number ha doesn't just stand for a point on a graph or a number in a calculation. It is actually a specific number of matter in the universe. So it's 0.5169 moles of lead. Let's try another one. 
Now, this is kind of like a lather, rinse, repeat situation here. So I'm going to move a little bit faster. How many moles are in 22.5 grams of aluminum? So you write 22.5 grams AL. Draw your little conversion chart. One mole goes on the top. The weight of aluminum from the periodic table goes on the bottom. I look up for aluminum. Aluminum is number 13. I round the two places past the decimal. So it says 26.98. Again, I pull out my handy-dandy calculator. Take 22.5 divided by 26.98. And I get 0.83395 dot, 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 dot. Again, I was given three digits in my given, so I'm going to round to three digits in my answer. So this is going to become 0.834 moles of aluminum. Box my answer so that Mr. Siegel can easily find it when I do my homework. Now let's do two that are a little bit more complicated. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to pause the video. I want you to try these on your own, and then I'm come back and see my explanation for what's going on. So right now I'm going to take a pause so you can pause the video. Okay, so hopefully you've done the, both problems and you're going to check your work and you're just going to sit back and relax for a moment and see what I've done. Or you can fast forward a little bit and just jump to the answers. Now, when you do a mole conversion for a compound, it's no different than doing a mole conversion for an element. The weights, the process is still the same. The weights are just going to get bigger. Write down what you're given. 26 grams of calcium perchlorate. One mole is still going on the top. But I still need the weight of this whole compound on the bottom. Now, obviously, it's not one substance. It's a whole bunch of substances. So I'm going to have to go to my calculator. And I have to add up the weight of all of these elements. So. Car uh, calcium is 40.08 plus. Now I just add everything up. Now the 2 outside the parentheses gets distributed through. So I'm looking for 2 chlorines plus 2 times 4 is 8 oxygens. Parentheses are your friend. Use them. So I get 238.98. Now that's just the weight of the calcium perchlorate from the periodic table. I still have to do the calculation of my moles. So I've got 26 grams of calcium perchlorate divided by, now, if you haven't ever used this function before, learn it. You hit second and then the negative button on the bottom which is an answer. And that pulls up the last number that you, the last calculation you just did, the answer for that. This way you don't have to retype all these numbers over and over again. So it's 26 divided by that number, and I hit enter, and I get 0.10879. But there are three digits in my given, so I'm going to round to three decimal places, so I get 0 0.109. Again, it's moles. I forgot the compound. So hopefully you got the exact same answer that I got. Now, let's go to the second one. Using xenon tetrafluoride, what you use does not change how you do the problem. I made that line entirely too long, so I am going to erase it and redraw it. I'd have no room to write my answer. Okay, so again, the how you do it, you just, I need the weight from the periodic table. So I look up xenon, which is 131.29, plus I need four fluorines, four times 19. Again, I'm rounding to two places past the decimal, so that rounds it to 19, just 207.29. Now, I'm going to put this right into the calculator because you can see both at the same time here, so it works out. So I'm going to take 45.08 divided by second answer, and I get point. Now I've got four digits in my given, so I'm going to round to four places in my answer. So 0 0.2174. And again, if you want to abbreviate mole, 
not that it's much of an abbreviation, but if you want to abbreviate the mole, the abbreviation is just M O L. Um, and this was 207.29, I believe. So, no, that's not right. I hate it when I forget a number. It was 207.29. Yay! Okay, so you can see grams and moles, it's always the same, the same format. The one mole goes on the, on the top. The weight from the periodic table is always going to go on the bottom for a gram to mole conversion. In the next podcast, I'm going to flip this. I'm going to do from moles to grams, and you'll see that the process is almost identical.